So we, that is me and my classmates, main interest in have decided to step into the role of journalist. Yes, we wanted to learn more about David Spear. How he got his name on his own building. And what did he do along the way? People always tell kids that life is like an open road. Where you can forge your own path, build on your own vacant city lot. Right, but that's intimidating. Where do you start? Somebody has to make an app for that. Maybe call it, what do you do with your life? So we thought, David Spear was a kid, right? How did he make his choices? Forge his own path. Build on his own vacant city lot. Where did he start? Well, he was born in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, Canada. And moved a lot when he was a kid. Like Soma, Alabama for freshman and sophomore years of high school. Then to Barrington, Illinois, where he graduated from Barrington High School in 1969. He received his BA in Industrial Engineering at Iowa State University. Then his MBA from Northwestern's Kellogg School of Management. He married Bob Spear in 1974. Together had two children, Blake and Sarah. We got a chance to talk to David's son, Blake, and his wife, Melanie, about what it was like growing up with a dad like Mr. Spear. First time I came to Chicago, Blake brought me home to meet his parents. And I mean, it really must have been because he knew how warm they were and how loving and caring they both were. He and she was Canadian, too. Yeah, so that, that, that helped, right? That helped. <laughs> Growing up, I mean, he, I can't ever remember him coming home past 6 o'clock. I mean, he was always around there in time for dinner and, you know, had a long commute on top of it. But, um, you know, he always made time for us. Uh, you know, even when I was young, you know, he, he was doing a lot of overseas travel to Asia at the time. And uh, he still made time to coach my baseball team. My sister was involved with swimming and, and he, he enjoyed, you know, going to her swim meets and things like that. So he, he was always around for us. Born in Canada, moved to Alabama, and graduated from Iowa. That's a pretty complex growing up. I have lived in the same place my whole life. It's not like he chose to move around, but it seems like he made the best of it. And if you look at this, it seems like his path became pretty clear when he joined ITW. Mr. Spear joined ITW in 1978. ITW is a global company that makes everything from six-pack rings on soda bottles to gas caps on automobiles. 50,000 employees working in 57 countries. Mr. Spear first worked in sales and marketing for the construction products business. He later became general manager, group vice president, and then executive vice president for construction. By 2004, he was elected president of ITW and then became CEO and chairman of the company the following two years. By 2010, Mr. Spear had led ITW to $15.5 billion in revenue, with half of that from outside the U.S. Mr. Spear moved up in the company through hard work and dedication. So that's the pathway. You work really hard for 30 years for a really good company and you become CEO. Pop, you get a building named after you. Well, I better get started. 30 years is a long time. There's got to be more to it than that. Yes, when I talked to Mr. Jim Farrell, he said Mr. Spear had a few other qualities that made him a great leader. Like he loved the opportunity and the challenge to blaze a new trail. And that his ready smile and sense of humor created a great team environment for him to lead. There's also Mr. Spear's quote that's in our school. It's the values that you display in your life that will inspire others to follow, which means he valued and supported others. Right, turns out he supported many organizations. I hope that this year we can count on your generous support. From United Way of Metro Chicago. To the Museum of Science and Industry. And of course, Junior Achievement. He would always tell us to, to whom much is given, much is expected, and you know, it's important that you be ready to give back. And we learned even more about Mr. Spears' leadership style from talking with current ITW CEO, Scott Santee. David was a great leader and a great role model for so many of us here at ITW. He was a great steward of the company's long tradition of successful performance and impact in terms of both the business side of ITW and also our role in the community. And fellow CEO and colleague Bob Parkinson of Baxter. David's style is a wonderful style. Common sense, good judgment, no nonsense, straight to the point in one hand, and on the other hand, have fun with it the ability to build trust and confidence in terms of representing himself and ITW in the community in so many ways. I'm not sure I can think of anyone who has been more engaged and sets a better example for others in that. You see, look at all that Mr. Spear did to give back. CEOs wearing costumes? Bowling, that looks like fun. 
He was so approachable, he was so authentic. Uh, he treated everyone with respect and dignity, and he also had fun with everybody. And Mr. Spia, teaching in a classroom. He volunteered in the classroom? We checked into that. Talking to Brian Whalen, a teacher at Glenbrook South High School where Mr. Spear volunteered. I, I guess I could say that if you saw David walking down the hall on the day uh, of his presentation, you wouldn't know that he was the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Just how humble and how empathetic he was in terms of uh, you know, seeing the world through a high school student's eyes and being able to relate to them. Mr. Spear seemed to be a big fan of Junior Achievement. He was vice chairman for JA of Chicago and volunteered in 11 different classrooms from 2006 to 2011. He didn't want uh, the attention. Uh, he didn't do this for the attention. Uh, he did it because he believed in it and to take time to come in to talk to a group of, of high school's kids uh, says a lot about his, um, you know, his values but also his dedication to uh, education and his dedication to, uh, to youth. I think I got as much or I enjoyed uh, David's visit as much as the kids did. Oh, I think of all the things that David was involved in, and I've seen him in other venues, there's no doubt in my mind that his involvement in JA was special. And it was also a family affair, as Mrs. Spear, Blake, and Sarah were also in the classroom teaching JA programs to students. That's exactly what Blake said. Yeah, my, my sister was working there at the time, and, and my dad and my mom would both go out together and, and teach some of the classes, and, and they both got involved. And my dad obviously loved my mom, and it was a great opportunity for them to do something they both enjoyed and give back to the community at the same time. I just hope that our son can inherit just half of a, or a fraction of the good heart that David had. Just, that was the most important thing about him, I think. Well, learning about Mrs. Spear taught us a lot about the right way to approach life. The right way to forge a path. And to build on your empty lot. Yes, like the ITW David Spear Academy. Where we go to school. He also taught us a lot about being a CEO and a leader. It takes a lot of hard work, yes, but it's also about caring for the people and communities around you. We thank you, Mr. Spear. All of us.